So one of the things that uh, we'll need to learn is is how to use some of the widgets in uh, in, the, in Bootstrap so that uh, we can or, we can bring the, bring in all the, that functionality of of tabs and um, uh, and pills and and cards and and, and and the like, right? So so to do that, uh, we uh, we need to install uh, the Bootstrap component as an npm as a Node.js uh, library, right? And and then declare that as a as a uh, dependency to the project. Notice the dash dash save uh, last in there. See that? Uh, what that does is that not only does it download the library for Bootstrap, but it also updates your package.json file and declares Bootstrap as a dependency of this project. Right? If you forget the dash dash save, right, the, uh, the, uh, the package.json might not be updated. And when you deploy it in Heroku, you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't work in Heroku. And I'm, gonna, I'm sure I'm going to get lots of uh, questions on Piazza saying, why does it work locally, and why doesn't it work on Heroku when I deploy on Heroku? And you know, the, the first answer I'll, I'll, I'll suggest, maybe you forgot dash dash save. Maybe it's, uh, you know, make sure that's in your package JSON file. Uh, so OK, so let's do that. Let's uh, declare that. Uh, and um, in our package here, and make sure that, uh, that uh, it's uh, declared as a dependency. So that's downloading it. So 421. Uh, meanwhile, we can, uh, we can import the uh, library from our index page. So this is our index page. Uh, so we can import it as a dependency. Uh, it, should, it should deploy it inside of modules, node, node underscore module. It should be under here, bootstrap. There it is, bootstrap. So it's been, it's been deployed here. So I'm just referring to it uh, from, my, uh, from my local index file. Uh, and what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, declare here a div. And uh, we're going to say that this is a class, class name container fluid. So here's a one, one thing to point out. Notice that that div is just a regular div. Right? But notice that instead of using class, the class attribute, we use class name. Right? And that's because in JavaScript, class is a reserved word. Right, so so the, the transpiler knows to convert class name down to the actual class. Right? And there's several, several instances of that in that, in that case. Okay? Um, also, another thing to point out is that render only takes a, a, well, two arguments. Yes? But the first argument has to be a single element. A single element. In this case, div is that one single element. Right? So you could not, for instance, uh, you could not, for instance, say um, uh, have this div and then uh, above it have an h2. Right? Notice that it complains. Right? And, one the, and one of the complaints is that, is that render uh, should only ex expects only one single element, one single div. Right? So, so in this case, the div is that one single element. Inside of that div, you can have any number of complex things in there. Yes? All right, so we did that. Let's, uh, let's see our, our index page. Notice that our index page now has a nicer font. right? Uh, no, notice that it's uh, added some paddings on either side. I know Bootstrap is installed. Yes? Um, OK. All right, so now I can start using, using all sorts of things in here. First of all, we'll, we'll declare our very first uh, uh, component right, that's going to host the entire application. Right, so so we'll we'll create a um, we'll create a, uh, a a whiteboard component. Right. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's uh, create a brand new component in here, and we'll call it whiteboard. And in whiteboard, we're going to uh, import. Uh, we don't have the import here. OK, so we're going to import uh, React uh, from React. Can't type. And in here, we're going to um, declare a class. So class whiteboard extends component, component. And I have a declared component, so let's declare a component here. And a component declares a function called render. 
And that render here, we're overriding it so that it returns the following. And that return is, uh, let's, uh, let's say, just say for now, uh, h1 uh, whiteboard. Right. Uh, so this is, this is a declaration of the class in here. And nobody can see this class unless I export it explicitly. Okay. Uh, so let's, uh, let's export it. We need to export it. The false, uh, the, uh, the false uh, whiteboard. Now it's exported in the in the default package, and uh, and and so now we can we can import it from the index. We can say import import uh, whiteboard from components whiteboard. And here we can just say white, whiteboard. There we go. So let's see what that renders. It, re it renders still hello. What? <laughs> oh, there it is, whiteboard. <sighs> okay. Yeah, so there's our whiteboard component. That is, right now it's just that. That's all it, ha that's all it is. Uh, so the white whiteboard is going to contain all sorts of things, right? By default, uh, the whiteboard might contain maybe the uh, course, the, the, the course list, right? Just rendering the, the list of, of courses. And then as you start interacting with the, uh, with the uh, course list, it might then display the, the editor and so on and so forth. Yes? So let's get started on seeing how, how we might render these things. So let's see. For, for one of the first things that we're, we're asked to do is to, is to render uh, the courses as a grid, right, using a deck of cards. All right, so let's let's take a look at uh, how we, we can do that. Uh, so so here we're gonna we're gonna declare a uh, new component. Go, call it a course card. So we, oops, and we're gonna declare it uh, here in, in components. We're gonna say a new file in course cards. I think yes, JS. Uh, and in here we're going to uh, do a couple of things. First, we're going to import what we need. So import React from uh, React. We always need to import React. Right? That's the minimum that we need to import. Now, React is a, um, it's a whole object right, that contains a whole bunch of things in, in there. Right? Uh, for instance, component, the actual declaration of the class, right, is, uh, is declared inside of the React uh, package. Right? Uh, so, so you can either. Just uh, the, the, the import React, and then extend React.component, yes? Or you can, say, uh, you can say that I know React is the top level uh, package, that inside there, I know there's a component. And that's what the square is curly brackets say, is that I know that inside in there, there's a whole bunch of properties. One of them, I know it's component. Right? I only want the component uh, element inside of that package. Right? And, and so now that makes it available in, the, in our local namespace, and that I can say React just component. So either way works. Right? You, can say, you can just load React all by itself. Right? You can just load React itself, and then, and then just say React.component. Or if, you, if you're going to use component lots of times, right, then it might be more convenient to just load it once and then use it multiple times. It's up to you. Right. The other point uh, that I'm, that I'm going to make here is that uh, you can export here at the end. You can say export uh, the fall and then course card so that you can be imported from a different uh, module. Or you can prepend. You can prepend this and put it inside of the class. Either way works. All right. I think this becomes way too long uh, and hard to read. Right. So I oftentimes prefer to to declare it down here. Okay. Also, I, uh, my preference, I like to uh, import the component explicitly and, and just use it once over here. Makes it easier to read uh, later on. Make sense? All right. Uh, so the course card, uh, let's, uh, let's render something real quick. So we're going to do render, render. And we're just going to return right now something simple, just h1 a course card. Oh, wait, is, it, is this called cards or card? Just one card? OK, just one card. Uh, so if we've got a whiteboard, notice that whiteboard is being, uh, uh, is being loaded by the R index, yes? And it's just rendering what? It's just rendering uh, whiteboard. That's it, yes? 
so um, say the whiteboard we want to include here the card that we just declared earlier, right? So it's course card. There it is. And notice that it automatically imported it from us, for us. So that's really good, right? It, uh, it finds it and it, uh, and it, it loads it right away. Uh, the only problem here is that notice that we um, remember that return always only accepts one element, right? And we have two. So we need to, we need to at least um, wrap this up in two, in, into a div, right, to make this just one element. There we go. Oops. Sorry. Save. So we go back and render. Notice that we have both whiteboard, right? Index loads whiteboard, and then whiteboard loads a uh, course card. Right? So you can have a component within a component within a component, you know, arbitrarily deep as you want. Okay. Uh, perhaps the only change that I would make is that I would change this to H2. Okay. Um, all right, so, so here's a, uh, uh, the return example that we have here is a, uh, is a div that uh, I copied straight from Bootstrap. Right? But this is a widget that Bootstrap renders as a little card, right, with some image at the top, some, some, uh, some, something at the, at the bottom, and then a button that you can click. Right? It's a static little, tiny little thing uh, from uh, Bootstrap. So if you search for Bootstrap, if I can type here, uh, bootstrap card. Right, so these are the cards, right? And this is a div that I copied. Right, so you can copy the, the, the div, right? It's a, it's a, and it renders this way like that. And, you know, so it has like a placeholder for an image, has a button that you can click, some text, some title. Right, it's already made, it's already styled. So no, no point in, in reinventing the wheel here, yes? Uh, so I copied it there and uh, and so I'm just going to copy this from straight from this uh, this div right there, and I'm just going to paste it uh, in here uh, in this in this in this uh, card house uh, uh, course card. Paste it in there. There we go. If we go back and render it, it's huge. What? <laughs> okay, that looks better. All right, but one thing that, that I'd like to point out is a couple of things here. Let's see. Uh, we have the div, we have the class. Notice styles. Notice those styles in there, right? That styles, uh, um, the, uh, you, can, you can put a, 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 a string uh, as a, a style, but notice this, this uh, doesn't say style. It says styles. Okay, so styles uh, takes as argument a JSON object. Right? Notice that it has, two curly, it has curly brackets, two curly brackets on either side. You see that? The outer curly bracket says that this is an expression. It's a JavaScript expression. The second inner curly bracket says that this is a JSON object. Right? Notice that it's formatted as a JSON object. It has a property and a value. Right? And the property is uh, width, and the value is 18 uh, REM. Yes? Uh, also, there's a class name and whatnot. Uh, so anywhere where you have an attribute, you can replace the string, like in this case, class name, or source, uh, or href, or any, any of those attributes. The value of that attribute can be replaced by a JSON string, or a function that could calculate that, that, the, the value that, 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 that returns there. Right, so you could, you could calculate this dynamically uh, to whatever, whatever you wanted to replace it. In this particular case, Styles has a hard-coded JSON object, right, with several name value pairs. Well, it has just one name value pair, which is width. But you can have any number of them, OK? Uh, and that JSON object is used to apply that particular style. Now, that word width, the word width happens to be the same name that you would use in a regular uh, CSS styles, right, just width. But uh, background color foreground color, you know, all the compound words that make up a style, those don't actually uh, have the same names that you would use in CSS, background, dash, color, right? Instead, it would be a camel cased version. You know, it would be, I think it's BG uh, color or, or FG for foreground color, right? So, so, so they're, not, they're not the same as CSS, right? And there's a long list of attributes that, uh, that map to the actual styles. Make sense? 
right? With happens to be identical uh, in, in this respect. So there's, there's nothing to remember about with. All right, so we, we're, we're, we're there. We, we did that. Let's go back and continue here. Um, uh, okay, so outside of whiteboard, we're going to use another, another div that instead of loading one single card, we're going to load a whole bunch of uh, course cards, right? And we're going we're gonna to wrap it inside of a div using the class card deck. Card deck is a bootstrap element that allows you to put together multiple cards, one after another, right, to create an entire list of cards. So let's do that. Let's copy that. So let's replace here in whiteboard, instead of just having one uh, uh, course card, let's have a whole bunch of course cards. So let's see how that renders. So that's a little better, right? It renders a little better. It's, it's, it's responsive, right? So if it has more of them, it just, you know, take, take up uh, less space. So we can have a whole bunch of these, right? So that's starting to look a little better. There we go, right? Uh, the image is pointing to some random image in Lodem, uh, Lodem Ipsum. I'm using Pix Pixum, not Lodem Ipsum, Pixum. That allows you to just dynamically render uh, random images, right, of a particular size. You can ask for a particular uh, size. Um, excellent. Um, all right, so we've, we've gone a, a long way. Let's see. Course Manager. Uh, let's take a look at um, uh, lists. How would we render lists? 